This morning on DC News Now, we're off to a cold start on our Monday morning. Right at the freezing mark in the district, other areas are starting off into the upper teens. So bundle up. Uh, more details. Look at towards our set seven day coming up. Plus, remembering a civil rights icon, how people are celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the DMV. And a complaint filed against a local university alleging discrimination, retaliation, and anti-Semitism in the classroom. Details of the complaint and the response coming up. Plus, Metro calling an emergency session yesterday after continued safety concerns. Or Joseph Omo is live this morning with what we know. The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. All right, it's 6 o'clock on this Monday morning. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Corey James. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. We're going to start you off with a live look outside on this Monday morning. We go now to the meteorologist Jackie Lair with a check on our forecast. Good morning. Good morning, Tania and Corey. We're tracking a clear and cold start to our Monday morning, so be sure to bundle up. Not only that, seeing a bit of a breeze, too. And that's making it feel even colder than these actual air temperatures. So right now we're starting off at the freezing mark in the district teens. Manassas as well as Luray, Woodstock and Winchester. 22 is what we're starting off with right now in Hagerstown. That wind chill is making it feel like we're into the upper 20s right now in the district 12. So it feels like in Manassas, look at this, Woodstock and Winchester. We're feeling like we're now into the single digit 16. So it feels like right now in Hagerstown. Across the DMV though, at least we're tracking dry conditions. But we will be seeing some rain chances increasing as we look ahead towards early tomorrow morning. But out there for your MLK day today, temperatures climbing into a low 40s as we get towards 11 a.m. and still mainly sun filled and high temperatures back into low 50s later on this afternoon. And we'll see ample amounts of sunshine for your Monday afternoon. I'll have a look ahead and timing out those rain showers for tomorrow coming up. But right now, I do want to toss it over to Shanika. The important traffic update. How are the roads? No problems at all. We're looking at uh, the inner and outer loop Capitol Beltway right near Georgia Avenue, 650 New Hampshire Avenue. You're looking OK through 29 and over to the 270 Spur. Can't complain right now. 95 on the Maryland side is looking good and the ICC looking at 270 through Frederick through Germantown, Gaithersburg, Rockville. It looks good. 70 east and west. No problems over to 66. I don't expect much happening today. It's looking good. 95 north and southbound. No problems at this time. All right, Shadika, thank you. Look at your headlines this mo morning. Loved ones and community members gathered Saturday to remember 13-year-old Karan Blake. Now, he was shot and killed in Northeast D.C. last Saturday. So far, no arrests have been made, and the shooter's name has also not been released. However, the mayor did confirm that he is a city employee. President Joe Biden is in more hot water this morning after another set of classified documents were found at his home in Delaware over the weekend. And this all comes just days after Attorney General Merrick Garland appointed a special counsel to investigate the president's handling of those documents. And today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and here in the district, the annual parade steps off at 11 o'clock this morning. Now, meantime, Metro trains and most buses will be running a Saturday schedule. Schools, government, and post offices, as well as libraries and banks, will also be closed. Our Lex Forrest will have more details coming up in just a few minutes. And this morning, something is brewing over at Metro headquarters in a highly unusual move. Leaders met behind closed doors yesterday in what they're calling an emergency executive session. That is right. DC News Now's Joseph Omo has been working to figure out why this meeting could not wait until the work week. So, Joseph, tell us what you found out. That is the big question tonight. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have as much information as we would like. One of the reasons for that is, you kind of mentioned it there, because these executive sessions are not like regular board meetings, they aren't streamed online, so we can't get inside there to see what they were talking about. But if you put two and two together, based on some recent news, it is clear that Metro is facing major, major safety issues. Think about it like this. As a passenger, you probably don't even think twice when you're boarding a Metro train. You just assume that the person operating it has received training and knows exactly what they're doing. But a scathing report from the agency that double checks what Metro's up to found that's not always the case. The Washington Metro Rail Safety Commission says that operators who have not completed their training properly are still at the controls of trains with passengers who are on board. Even Metro admits that over 60 of their rail operators didn't follow the proper order of training. Our colleague Daniel Hamburg interviewed a WMSC spokesperson last night. Take a listen. When there are basic safety commitments made, um, we expect Metro to stick to those basic safety commitments. Metro does not have enough train operators to operate its schedules safely. Um, and so that is um, part of, uh, of an issue that they operationally are dealing with. 
And guys, just a reminder, Metro has not confirmed to us what happened in that meeting, but you got to wonder why were the top leaders taken away yeah. on a Sunday at three o'clock in the afternoon to rush into headquarters to talk about safety and security. So yeah. Yeah. on a holiday weekend, too. Yeah, on a mm -hmm. holiday weekend. I got a message out to Wamata this morning, too, as well, because I believe that there's going to be a press conference, but I want confirmation on that. So we can get some more insights as to, as to why their yeah. weekends were so mm -hmm. mashed up about this. All a right. lot of questions, a lot of concerns. Yeah, yeah. All definitely. Right, thanks, Joseph. Yeah, of course. I don't want to keep waking up knowing that my brother's not here with me no more. I don't. It hurts. It really hurts me. Well, right there you heard Zaire Matthews speaking on Saturday evening at a vigil for his brother, Karan Blake. Now, this all happened just one week after Blake was shot and killed in Northeast D.C. As of this morning, police have not made any arrests. Police do say a city employee shot Blake after that man thought the teen was breaking into several cars. Police are asking for the community's patience while their investigation continues. Meantime, friends and family say they are still struggling with what happened. Just hearing that my brother got shot. I don't like hearing that. I don't. I don't. I just can't believe he's gone because I would never see him again. <laughs> Now that vigil came about one hour after D.C. Police Chief Robert Conti met with community in Southeast to discuss some of the challenges the district is facing. Since the start of the new year, the district has seen at least seven deadly shootings, many of those children. Chief Conti said pushing, punishing the kids involved is only part of the solution. Parents also need to be more involved in their children's lives. This is like an opportunity for us to really take an inventory collectively of what's happening in the community. Are we allowing our kids to be uh, you know, babysat by iPads and TikTok and Instagram? Chief Conti and others at the panel pointed out that despite the perceptions, juvenile crime has fallen around the district over the last few years. And the district is also mourning the loss of a teacher who was killed after an encounter with Los Angeles police. Kenan Anderson was tased multiple times and later suffered cardiac arrest and died. Black Lives Matter co-founder and Anderson's cousin, Patrice Cullors, says she is heartbroken over the news of her cousin. Our whole entire family is in shock and devastated by um, the death of Keenan uh, at the hands of LAPD. Um, the video footage shows a really terrified human being, someone who was asking for help. Color said the officer's use of a taser was excessive force. She's also calling for more accountability for LAPD after this tragedy. And covering the White House this morning, just days after a special counsel was appointed to investigate President Biden's handling of classified documents, five additional pages were found in his home in Delaware over the weekend. Now, those documents were in addition to the ones found in his garage and former office here in D.C. This all comes just months after President Former President Donald Trump's Florida home was raided when FBI agents found thousands of classified documents there. Congressman Jim Comer leads the House Oversight Committee in charge of the investigations, and he claims there is a double standard, but some Democrats say there are clear differences in the cases. There have you know, been countless examples of presidents and vice presidents who have accidentally taken uh, documents that were deemed classified with them. But the National Archives made, you know, a huge deal out of the Trump situation. The president's lawyers, the moment they found out about the documents that day, turned them over to the National Archives and uh, ultimately to the Department of Justice. That is a very different posture than what we saw with Donald Trump. And White House officials say they are cooperating with the special counsel's investigation. And on Capitol Hill, the U.S. is just days away from hitting the debt ceiling. When that happens, it's almost like hitting the spending limit on a credit card. If the U.S. hits it, the country cannot pay its bills. Speaker Kevin McCarthy has said that he had a good conversation with President Biden about the incoming debate, but past forecasts suggest government default could instantly bury the country in a recession. All right, well, today is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and across the DMV, people are coming together to honor his life and legacy. Yeah, those celebrations have been going on all weekend, and today people will fill the streets in support of his vision of peace. DC News Now's Lex Wars is live this morning in Southeast DC, where a peace walk and parade are planned. And Lex, what can people expect today? 
Well, especially if they're going to be here in Southeast DC, they can expect crowds and street closures. All of the main festivities are going to be kicking off right here at the Rise Center. That's going to start at 11 o'clock and people are already starting to get here to set up for those main events. Now, Mayor Bowser and other city leaders will be out here ready to walk with community members. The crowd will start getting ready around 1030 this morning, leaving here from the Rise Center. The parade route will go up Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue Southeast and will end on Anacostia Drive by the National Capital Parks East. Now, WMATA is also making changes to their schedule today, and that's going to be important to note for people who will be off of work and coming to Southeast for the parade. Now, both trains and most buses will be running on a Saturday schedule. That means that on the rails, stations will be open from 5 until midnight tonight. And with trains, depending on the line, running every 8 to 20, every 8 and 20 minutes. Now, bus schedules will also be varying. So it is best that if you do take the bus that you go to Metro's website for more information on your specific route. And if you take Metro access, those will be operating on a normal service, but you still might need to make a separate reservation. So it's going to be definitely important that you're keeping up and looking on WMATA's website site to make sure that you know exactly when to go and can get where you need to go on time. Now, also, you know, over the weekend, while the celebrations have been ongoing, President Biden made his way to Atlanta. Just yesterday, he spoke at Ebenezer Church. That's actually Dr. Martin Luther King's home church in Atlanta, and he spoke and gave a little speech and talked about reminding us all the importance of Dr. King's teachings. We have to choose a community over chaos. Are we the people who are going to choose love over hate? These are the vital questions of our time and the reason why I'm here as your president. I believe Dr. King's life and legacy show us the way and we should pay attention. Now, as with any holiday, it is important to remember there are closures across the city. As always, public schools, government offices are closed. Most banks also closed and most libraries are. But MLK Junior Library over there in um, the Chinatown neighborhood will be having some special readings today. So those are going to be going on around lunchtime that you can take your kids to. It's also important to note that parking across the city will be free today as it is a federal holiday. So make sure that you're out and taking advantage of that. Live in Southeast DC, I'm Lex Juarez, DC News Now.